Good. Remind everybody um, who you is and what you do. Who I is is Jonathan Smith. I'm the executive director of the Yakima County Development Association. We're the economic development organization for Yakima County, helping businesses and uh, uh, workers. We normally think of you uh, in in two phases as it comes to our door, Jonathan. And that's uh, you guys do the Great Entrepreneurial Challenge, and we like to talk a lot about that because that's the exciting future of. Uh, of uh, American ingenuity and imagination and, and all of that. Uh, and the other is, uh, as you say, being a resource uh, to help bring businesses here and uh, provide information for business. And, um, you know, business, small business, is uh, really under the gun right now. We're seeing a, a lot of, uh, of the service-type businesses that we have in this country uh, and in our community having to shut down, lay people off, uh, unknown as to, you know, timelines, that sort of thing. Uh, what kind of information? Are you, are you Santa today? Do you have a big bag and are you going to give something to each of us? Or? I am Santa today. So I, <laughs> I'd heard from some folks that, you know, they'd heard from people that they know that own businesses that they just told employees that, hey, you just got to go home. You're laid off. You know, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, in some cases, people were saying that they had just fired their employees. Well, there's resources out there that are available. Um, the unemployment benefits have been majorly expanded so uh, you can really give your employees a lot of confidence in you as a business owner and give them some assurity that things are going to be okay if instead I mean the end result is going to be the same if you got to lay somebody off because of this you got to lay them off but you can say hey look um, you're going to go home you're going to call this number for unemployment when the unemployment claims come to me I'm going to check the box that says standby because you're a great employee we want to have you back what that means is that you don't have to do job searches while you're collecting uh -huh. unemployment benefits very good. And you're, we fully expect that you're going to come back and be hired on. Um, that goes for both full-time, part-time workers is what I've heard now that they've uh, expanded that unemployment benefits. Usually you just get that for full-time in a regular situation since this is an emergency. Um, that's to part-time. And so for those employees who are simply being told to go home, you can give them some assurances that, hey, as your boss, I want to make sure that we get you back here with us when this is all over. Um, you're going to get taken care of. Great to know. And, of course, you'd think that, uh, you know, in times of, of downturn, if you will, uh, the uh, unemployment offices are packed with people. You're not going to find that now because I don't even know if they're open or if they're only doing things online or, or by appointment only. Well, with that points out. Uh, yeah, the quickest way for sure is to go online and do that. Yeah. Uh, they definitely have a lot more calls and requests than what they would typically have. Sure. Um, seeing as how there's just been, you know, the the moratoriums, so to speak, put on certain businesses operating in certain ways. So um, with that, uh, they're trying to gear up and ramp up and get more people uh, who can provide answers and get people through the system as quickly as possible. I think they're looking for like 110 people right now to help uh, mitigate all that so temporary folks who can help get people through the unemployment process and start getting them you know some assurities that hey, everything's going to be okay you know it, it sucks it sucks for everybody we're sure. all in this together you know it sucks for those of us who want to go out to eat it sucks for those of us who work there and um, may have hours cut and those kind of things but uh, the the point of the programs is to have everybody you know rest assured this is going to be a, a hard time for a few weeks maybe a month we don't know how long it's going to be but you know all right, but uh, I, I appreciate, again, a, a positive attitude and a positive approach. And, and if you're not hearing that from your bosses, uh, you need to know that that is the condition that's out there, right? So even if they don't say it, yep. you need to know it and, and proceed accordingly. Uh, but what if this thing goes 18 months? People are saying, you know, uh, if, if we really want to cap the, the number of fatalities, uh, we need to not mingle until we have a vaccination and that might not happen for 18 months. My assumption is they would uh, continue to expand these programs to yeah. allow that. It doesn't do uh, the country as a whole or the global you know, world as a whole if two weeks from now, if that's what it is, or four weeks or 18 months, we come out of this and nobody's got any jobs or anything to do. Yeah, So absolutely. Uh, that's, and that gets back to the... The, the cost versus benefit conversation that we've been having all morning. Um, as far as the aspects of what you normally do, I mean, we appreciate you being Santa and a cheerleader here this morning. That's great. And I know that in, in many ways that's sort of what you do in terms of the bigger picture for business in the community. Uh, but are you guys uh, about what you normally do? I mean, who's talking about bringing a business to Yakima uh, at this time and that sort of thing, you know? 
That, yeah. you, if it was ever a tough sell before, yeah. uh, although people from the west side might find it a, a little more encouraging with only five cases in our community. So yeah, and it is uh, there. There still is business activity. There's uh, some buildings that you know we've learned about that have recently been purchased. There's folks who are doing expansion still or planning them, uh, and so there is still uh, economic activity going sure. on. Uh, and those things are still happening. And so we're continuing to work on that, but our attention is definitely focused to uh, reaching out to small businesses and uh, particularly to businesses that have been impacted by uh, the proclamations that the governor sent out on you know, large gatherings and things to make sure that they have the information that, you know, there's, in addition to putting people on standby, there's shared work. So if you just have to reduce someone's hours, unemployment can cover the rest of their hours. So, so if somebody only works 20 hours a week, they can file for unemployment. And you can help get them set up for that through a shared work program, and unemployment will cover their missed hours. So there's all well, sorts of things available so that uh, people don't lose a considerable amount of income and feel like you know they need to to panic because they're not going to be able right. to pay their bills. Well, that's where panic will come from too. Is you know when you're pushed into a corner where you don't feel like you have any options. Now this is normally would be um, you know work source Yakima or the you know unemployment. Office we're sort working of super close with them. I was going to say you yeah. almost sound like you're, uh, uh, you know, cloning like out from them. Cheerleader. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, no, you're saying what they would tell us. Um, so do we work through them? Work through yeah, you? We work or? through them. Yeah. yeah. If you've got their information, uh, that's the place to go. The Employment Security Department website, the same places that you would go to normally do uh, unemployment. What we're really trying to do is get out the message that there's these uh, programs that are available. Everybody knows that unemployment exists, and so. Uh, what we're hearing is that folks are just saying, hey, just go file for unemployment. We don't know what's going to happen. We're trying to provide a little bit more certainty for these businesses because you know, the workers are probably their number one asset that they have. And if they sure. can instill confidence in them that, and show them that, hey, we're, we know what we're doing as a business owner. We want you to take advantage of these programs that are put in place to help you and us get through this so that when we come out the other side, we're all good together. Right. We want you back because you're good for our business, and, and we don't want to lose you to uh, another community or another option if there's stuff that can help you, you know, shelter in place, as we say, yeah. uh, and, cut and come out of it uh, you know, with as little damage as possible. And on top I mean, of that, business owners can let their folks know if they're going to be having reduced income that Pacific Power has programs in place. Go to their website. They're delaying things as well if you're affected by the, you know, layoffs and things. Same with Cascade Natural Gas. You know, the, the uh, feds aren't charging you interest on your student yeah. loans right now. I mean, there's a, any one of a number yeah. of things that might... Uh, show up in the daily mail as bills that uh, there's options to to help. Yeah, I sure. talked to one news outlet and they said that people had been calling them saying, you know, what happens if my landlord kicks me out because I miss rent? And uh, no landlord right now wants to have an empty house, right? Um, they're not going to be <laughs> any better off by having you not there than they are having you there. Um, it's not like there's going to be a whole it's host not like of new, new tenants coming in with, with money, right? <laughs> exactly. And what happens to an empty house? That becomes Squatterville or whatever. If you can't fill yeah. it, then it's more of a liability than not. So, so. so just like we're saying to, to, to folks like that, you know, work with your landlord. Let them know ahead of time, hey, I've been laid off because of this or that. You know, they'll work with you, and we're doing the same thing with businesses. The first place to check is with your local bank. Some of them already have programs put together. I know WAFED has some programs that they've developed. You know, if you bank with Key Bank or Banner or U.S. Bank or any of those, Wells Fargo, reach out to them first if you're, you know, going to be impacted by this and see what things you can work out with them. If not, if they don't have something that fits for you, there's the SBA Lender Match Program, and I think that that only takes about two days. Uh, you go online to the SBA Lender Match, and this is a program that's always existed. Uh, but they're really ramping it up right now, well, and it connects small businesses with lenders all across the country. And, you know, it's interesting because we probably had a little bit of a shakedown practice with uh, Astria closing down. You know, a lot of uh, yeah. companies and businesses decided to extend, um, you know, time windows and benefits and things like that to folks from Astria who got bumped for no cause of their own. And so... Uh, they'll already be aware of how to handle some of this stuff. I'm at the esd.wa.gov website, Employment Securities Department, and a big headline right across the top. It says, Attention, Workers and Businesses Afflicted by COVID-19. Uh, Employment Security has programs designed to help individuals and employers during this unprecedented time. And so there you go. Uh, 
that'd be the place to to start, I would imagine. Uh, yep, uh, esd.wa.gov, and then uh, you can go deeper into it as you as you poke around there. But that's, uh, I guess, that's the uh, the weight of the message that you're you're bringing here is that. Uh, all hope is not lost. Be sure to check with the Department of, of Health. There's a, a posting, and I'll leave this with you, too. They've got a little uh, graphic that shows what businesses are allowed to still operate. Uh, we've had some folks who said, well, I'm a retail business, and so I, I can't operate. I've got to close my doors, you know, small businesses, and that's not the case. Uh, you just need to make sure that you have a person designated, and it can even be yourself, to implement social distancing measures at your business. Sure. And those I, instructions are, you know, on the Department of Health website. You know, they're the standard things we've all been hearing, six feet apart, sanitize yeah. areas. Yeah, as I scan this list then, Jonathan, most of the things that aren't allowed are, again, those kinds of things that would draw bigger crowds together yep. uh, at the same time for the same purpose. Um, you know, if you got to get gas, you're going to be able to go gas. to the gas yeah. station. If you've got to buy uh, groceries, you can yep. do that. If you've got to yeah. buy diapers, you can do that. If you've got to go, you know, right. pick up whatever it is, you, you know, retail can, can still continue on, but... Uh, be aware that you do need to implement. They've asked everyone to, who is operating retail to implement those social distancing. Sure. Well, um, thank you. I hope uh, hope the next time we talk, it's about what do we do now that uh, if this is in the rear view and we want to gear back up and, and leap ahead and get back to where we were and beyond. Um, don't know when that will be, but uh, that's, the, that's the hope. But if uh, we should need more information, depending on how long this goes, uh, please come back and uh, and share again, and and of course, as uh, the projects that you're specifically tasked with working with uh, come online, we uh, we look forward to chatting about them as well, John. Sure. So. Thanks.